modernized weapons technology. For a hundred thousand years, mankind only ever made spear points like these from simple flakes of stone. But the Seleucians took a quantum leap forward. Using advanced techniques, they made spear points that were 50% thinner and lighter. These edges are 100 times sharper than a steel razor. Archaeologist Bruce Bradley has spent 20 years teaching himself how to craft weapons like Solutrians. The flaking is so complex that you can't just think your way through it, you've got to feel your way through it. Bruce has learned that no other Stone Age culture was capable of making tools this way. This technique, this, this way of doing things, is, is the most complex um, technology and, and method that we know of in the Ice Age. Bruce's unique knowledge of this technique would unlock a mystery. In 1996, archaeologists made one of the most baffling discoveries ever made in North America. This spear point was found in Virginia. When Bruce saw it, he was amazed. It looked identical to those discovered in France. Carbon dating showed it was buried 17,000 years ago when archaeologists believed North America was uninhabited. It was a revelation. Could it indicate the impossible? The idea that people may have populated the New World from uh, Europe, the European continent, is, is so dramatically different from anything I was ever taught that it's, it's almost a, an unbelievable concept. For almost a century, scientists have believed that North America wasn't discovered until 12,000 years ago, when people from Asia crossed a land bridge from Russia to Alaska. But what Bruce had seen challenged the accepted theory. It was one of those sort of, no, this can't be, and yet, how can it not be? Because it's, it's there. It's right there in front of us. Had Europeans brought their technology to North America 6,000 years before anyone else? And if they had, the even tougher question facing scientists was, how? To reach North America, they would have to cross the ultimate natural barrier, the Atlantic Ocean. Armed with only Stone Age technology, was this even possible? After days away, the hunters return with only one horse. Bayorg's first responsibility is towards his family, his wife, his daughter Zia, and his eldest son, Guyan. But as the clan leader, he must share the kill with everyone. Bayorg's clan need to kill more game than this to survive. This horse will last less than a week. Bayorg knows his clan is in trouble. No part of the horse is wasted. 
By eating brains and eyes, they get vitamins they can't get anywhere else. And in the marrow of the bones, they find the most crucial food of all, fat. It gives them energy and warmth to survive in this freezing climate. <laughs> With full stomachs, life is good. But soon the hunger will be back. <laughs> A week later, the horse meat is all but gone. Your guinea? Check out. Give me guinea tea. Yig Sabian. Give me tea. Yig Sabian. Give You dirty bod. You Xavian. You Xavian, Bjorg. You Xavian. As the leader, Beorg must punish the murderer. He is also the clan's shaman. He buries his finest spear points as an offering so that the spirits might guide his decision. It is tradition among all clans to either kill or exile a murderer. The exile knows that he needs the clan to survive. Alone, his chances are slim. Come. Come, what are you doing? Happy day, sir. Can I hear them? I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go. Bayorg now must provide a solution to their hunger, or there will be more deaths. <laughs> <laughs> 